So this is Jorge Corralacero from Oxford University. And during the next few minutes, I'm going to provide you an overview of my research on automated 3D shape analysis of the heart. We will walk together from 2D MRI scans all the way up to mechanical simulations, covering some of the challenges, limitations, and, and opportunities. The topic has already been motivated a number of times during the week, but in essence, uh, given the current socio-political framework with tightening financial constraints and aging population, personalized and preventive medicine appears to be crucial for the sustainability of the, of the healthcare systems. In this regard, uh, it makes sense to investigate the worldwide uh, primary cause of death, that is cardiovascular diseases. The problem here is that while functional structural remodeling is associated uh, uh, with cardiovascular diseases, the interplay is largely unknown. Opportunities to overcome this challenge arise with the expansion of, of uh, big data and deep learning. We've got now powerful tools and larger data sets to ask the relevant clinical questions. In particular, my research focuses on acute myocardial infarction, AMI, which presents one of the largest incidences and where the mortality within the six months after infarct episodes sits at 12%. The ventricular remodeling has proven crucial for recovery, being the two most established uh, biomarkers, ejection fraction and systolic volume. This is the most important slice of the presentation, and I promise I'm not going to say this in any single slice. <laughs> so, the ultimate goal of my research is to gain a better understanding of how cardiac anatomy modulates human cardiovascular diseases. This is a structure into three research objectives. The first objective is the development of a fully automated pipeline to estimate the 3D shape of the heart from 2D cardiac MRI scans. It focuses on, on methodological aspects to overcome the challenges of the 2D CMR segmentation and its translation into, into the 3D meshes. The second uh, research objective consists of the 3D analysis of the heart morphology in cardiovascular diseases, specifically in, in acute myocardial infarction patients. It investigates the functional and structural interplay towards risk management improvement after infarct. And the third one further expands the project pipeline from just CMR imaging data to personalized simulation of the heart by solving the inverse problem and optimizing the, the personalized mechanistic parameters. Let's briefly touch on, on each of them. So, in order to obtain the shape of the heart, we first need to segment the 2D CMR images. While the state of the art techniques based on deep learning has taken over in medical imaging uh, field, cardiac segmentation remains challenging because of the limited availability of the, of the training data and because of the enormous anatomical variability. To overcome this, we develop a SMOD that lends the availability of the population to produce anatomically meaningful deformations to augment the data set. It was proven to perform a standard augmentation, especially in scenarios where the available data was very limited or the structure uh, to be segmented are highly complex and variable, like for instance in, in, a, in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This work was awarded uh, as this paper at Functional Immediate Model Heart 2019. We then focus on the practical implementation and develop this two-step deep learning approach, which addresses canonical orientation for left ventricular uh, regional metrics quantification. It also contributes to level balance by zooming into the region of interest for segmentation performance improvement. In this work, we also fine tune the small hyperparameters and we explore uh, different deep learning architectures for the fine segmentation model. This led to another paper and a first prize award at the 11 Equal Quantification Challenge in Mikae 2019. This, however, a remaining challenge towards to the CMR segmentation, which is the imaging heterogeneity introduced by different scanners, centers, and diseases, as Andy explained on Monday uh, for echocardiography. Thus, we explore uh, two domain adaptation techniques, 
domain and learning and domain adversarial training to resolve this image in heterogeneity and externally validated our results in the multi-center, multi-vendor, multi disease challenge in MIKAI this year. Turns out that, that the domain adaptation improvement was not significant for SIM vendors, uh, but it was for, for SIM ones. And this is partially because of the robustness of the two-step baseline approach that I mentioned before. This work led to another publication, and while we did not win the challenge, our results were not significantly different with respect to the rank first algorithm. We are currently working in collaboration with the challenge organizers to publish a review paper at TMI. So now that we've learned to segment 2D CMR, we can arrange the segmentation in 3D and apply variation of warping techniques to register the, the polymetric segmentation to a cubic and mesh template, obtaining the personalized left ventricle of the patient. So once we run this mesh personalization pipeline in a population, acute myocardial infarction, in, in our case, we can move to the, to the second research objective, which is the shape analysis. And thus, we apply machine learning techniques, in particular principal and component analysis, to build a statistical uh, shape models, models pardon, uh, and identify the main modes or ways in which the shape varies in the population. This is the, the same technique that Mathieu and Cristobal already explained. Uh, in the video that you are going to see, TCA is applied on a systolic shape of the myocardial infection patients, and we identify scaling, mode one, anterior curvature, mode five, and thickening, mode six, as some of the main variations. We can do exactly the same with contraction, approximate it as a diastolic shape minus a systolic shape, and investigate the prognostic value of these different modes of, of variation. And thus, we could eventually substitute the standalone most established markers in acute myocardial infarction, uh, which are a systolic volume and ejection fraction, as mentioned before, by their 3D disentanglement into a systolic shape and 3D contraction. And this is precisely what we did in collaboration with the German Center for uh, Cardiovascular Research that kindly uh, gave me access to data. We first developed this fully automated pipeline and applied to a thousand plus acute myocardial infarction cohort. And then we identify left ventricular and systolic shape and contraction features related uh, related to prognosis after infarct, such as the, the anterior curvature, the basal impairment, the thickening, etc. And finally, we, we, we show the significant improvement in, in adverse out outcome prediction of the proposed and historic shape and uh, contraction descriptions, uh, descriptors are performing by far the standalone established by markers and systolic volume and ejection fraction. And finally, note that Regardless of this 3 disentanglement improvement, the use of the proposed pipeline would be already justified by removing the burden of manual segmentations and by introducing 3D consistencies. As we see in the, in the results, the systolic volume and ejection fraction measure uh, directly from the, from the 3D meshes and mark with an asterisk significantly outperform the manual metrics. So now, given a certain um, hard shape and the mechanistic parameters, the computer model simulates uh, the contraction, electrical activation, and their different scenarios. However, these models are usually non-invertible, and fine-tuning the parameters to fit a certain uh, contraction trace is not as straightforward and can take from days up to weeks. Within this third objective, we propose a pipeline in collaboration with IBM New York that goes all the way up from 2D CMR to solve the inverse problem in a matter of minutes. So in brief, the, the MRI short axis stack is, is segmented. A 3D segmentation of this stack is approximated to an idealized shape. The unloaded configuration uh, is estimated via previously trained Gaussian processes. And three detailed finite element simulations are run 
uh, on the allotted geometry under three different homodynamic loads. The results of these simulations are used to train a lower order model that combines single cell mechanistic modeling with Gaussian processes to emulate the whole ventricle. And finally, this fast, very fast lower order model is used to solve the inverse problem via iterative uh, optimization. In comparison uh, to Cristobal's work, our emulator do not include electrical activation, by the, but they do fit the model parameters to an observed behavior. So we get these personalized uh, mechanical parameters. We are currently applying uh, this pipeline to the acute myocardial infarction cohort. And in the next few weeks, we will assess the potential of these uh, personalized mechanistic parameters as biomarkers. And also we will use this modeling tool to further explain the previously identified shape and contraction markers. So let's finish the presentation by zooming out a little bit to understand the implication of the, of the thesis as a whole. So based on the MRI scans, clinical data, we have applied statistical models to identify shape and contraction features related to myocardial infarction prognosis. And we are using now mechanistic models to digest and further explain the findings in line with the vision of our European International Training Network. The proposed pipeline that goes all the way from MRI to personalized modern parameters in a matter of minutes allows to potentially simulate treatments and to create a 3D avatar of the patient with just MRI uh, scans. <laughs> of course, huge assumptions has been made and, and the work has several uh, limitations, but this is just the beginning and I'm really excited to, to contribute to the vision of the digital twin and, and somehow, uh, if I could say so, to the future of, of personalized medicine. I would like to thank my, my supervisors, Vicente, Alfonso and Pablo, my collaborators, Ernesto, Andreas and Slava, uh, and you guys for this really nice journey. Uh, I really can't believe that almost three years are already gone. Uh, it's been a, a huge pleasure, and I really hope that we can physically meet at least one last time very soon. Thank you very much. Happy to take questions now. Thank you. And indeed, we all hope to meet each other pretty soon, um, face to face. Any questions? So being more Pablo, come on guys. It was everything that clear? Is there no question? No uncertainty? All right, Anna. Anna, please ask your question. Yeah, hello, thank you for your presentation. Very interesting uh, project. Um, I was wondering about the biomechanical model, if you can comment on that, and uh, if you are planning to use um, like homogeneous material everywhere, or can you see where is the position of um, myocardial infraction and then compute some different parameters for this region and to optimize like a, um, both um, materials properties and include that in, in your model and see if we can predict something from uh, these new parameters. So in principle information about the location of the infarct could be included. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not, it's not uh, included so far and actually the shape is simplified so the, the simulations are, are super fast because here the, the idea was trying to get something very, very fast, so we could run and estimate the modeling parameters in the, in a thousand patients uh, within a reasonable uh, time framework. But of course, in the in the future, we could include location and size of the infarct and, and try to see. Sorry, sorry. Hmm. Yeah, that I, I was saying that in principle, in principle, we could of course include uh, the size and location of the infarct, especially in the in the finite element modeling. Uh, but the idea here is trying to to give it a, a run without this information and see whether actually 
the, the contractility, cancer handling uh, results could somehow predict this inference size. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Andrew, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Jorge. Thanks for the presentation. Um, quick question on the augmentations that uh, you talked about. What's the, to what extent was it MRI specific or cardiac specific? Like what would it take to adapt to a new imaging modality or what would it take to adapt it to new anatomies? I would say it's more cardiac specific, uh, but it could be adapted. So in the end, it's a, an statistical model and, and it depends on what you are modeling. So if you feed another anatomy, uh, you could create this shape model and, and deform the images accordingly. So, and, and the, the, the model as it is could be applied to any imaging modality. The only problem with the echo is um, the standardization of different planes. I don't know exactly how this would work into the echo where there is that much variability on the, on the planes. I don't know whether this was your question, Andy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So to to your question, it, that this cannot be directly applied to your echo images for sure. Uh, it could be applied for liver CT directly, for instance, or for you know lungs or CT or another kind of MRI that is very brain MRI or things like this that are very uh, standardized in terms of planes or location or 3D which doesn't need to be standardized, you can register it easily. But yes. in ECHO, where okay. you can get planes moving a little bit, you have a lot of variability, uh, maybe we need to reframe it somehow. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, cool, thanks. Thank you, Andrew. Christian. Hi, Jorge. Uh, it was great to, to listen to your presentation. It's a, it's a great pleasure, guys, listening in these days, all of you. I really miss our our previous life. Uh, we will be probably in St. Hughes drunk uh, <laughs> <laughs> talking. But look, I have just a curiosity because uh, I'm working uh, on a model of myocardial infarction too uh, on, uh, on different stages. Uh, and there are several um, experimental evidence from animal model, in particular uh, canine and swine models. Uh, of, a, of, of an important role of the Burkini system in the myocardial infarction. Uh, however, we don't have any, really any information uh, from the imaging at the moment, um, even if there are new techniques that uh, are increasing the resolution. I was wondering if you, if in your have some information on the Burkini system and how this, uh, this information may be integrated in your pipeline? I, I don't have that information. I could potentially know the location of the infarct. We know the size of the infarct that has been measured for these uh, clinicians uh, in Germany. Um, there, there has been acquiring like uh, late gadolinium images, so they can also locate and of course measure the infarct. But this is something that we are not incorporating in the model right now. The model only sees a shape and a contraction trace. This is all the information that the model uh, sees. And uh, information about, so th it, it, th there is no, not anything. So th this could be applied to, to infarct or to control population as it is. So we are not fine tuning for the, for the purpose. Because the, the, one of the hypotheses is that the, just by looking at the contractility results, you could tell a prognosis or you could tell infarcite, or you could tell these kind of things. But yeah, very interesting that in the future we could incorporate somehow the location of the infert, not only, uh, yeah, and, and, and the way of doing it is, is using uh, models that accounts for, for these port uh, currents. And the, the funny, the, the interesting part here is that any model could be used for the finite element uh, modeling in principle. So we are using the one that we are using uh, at IBM. It's uh, one that they, they have developed and they are using idealized shape because it runs very, very fast because of symmetry. But in, in, in theory, you could run the simulations with anything and then train the, 
the single cell and the Gaussian processes with this information. So there is room for for a lot of things and, and for more modeling stuff. I'm, I'm to be honest, I'm, I'm more like a user. I'm not a developer. Uh, so you guys are the experts here. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, Christian. Thank you. Okay. Would there be any role for tagging kind of MRI imaging in, in, in your workflow? That, that's a very interesting question. So here we are approximating contraction as n systolic uh, shape and diastolic shape minus n systolic shape, which is a very, very rough approximation. Uh, it was just as a proof of concept that this uh, contraction was adding uh, to prognosis. But yeah, in, in principle, you could you could do something more uh, more fancy or more rigorous to assess the contraction like MRI tagging, or you could even do uh, echo to assess a strain somehow. But yeah, there is room for for a lot of things. This this was the, the methods that I'm using here are very very simple to prove the concept and and to make sure that that I don't get criticism on the on using like very weird or 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 things. You know, I'm trying to use very well accept, well established and accepted methods. On the on the on the machine learning and deep learning part, so I don't get criticism uh, from clinicians because this I think this is working and this is clearly working. And in the future, once it's accepted, we could go for more um, other techniques in in classification. Here I'm using just linear classifiers. I could use the same that that Valeria has shown with these uh, ensembles and and using. Uh, support vector machine and this stuff. I'm for sure the the prediction score will will go much much higher. No, no and indeed it it it's a major step in also in complexity. But I thought for the MRI imaging. Okay, thank you.